hello, everybody. Um, my name is Russell Wolf. Um, been working with Kotlin Multiplatform for about five years, uh, working these days at Touch Lab. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about um, my experience as uh, the uh, developer of Multiplatform Settings, uh, which was a uh, Kotlin Multiplatform library for key value storage. Um, so, quick overview of uh, what it is. Uh, like, uh, so it's a, a key value storage uh, library uh, so that you can um, persist uh, simple data um, and st strings, et cetera, primitive values um, in your common code. Um, it delegates to the different platform APIs under the hood. Um, so that helps the uh, helps with interop. So if you have some shared code and some platform specific code, you can share your source of truth. Um, and uh, I recently released the 1.0 version. Um, so it's uh, if you're somebody who cares about um, the one dot on the front for uh, stability, um, it is now there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about where uh, where that all started. Um, so um, call them 1.0 in, uh, in 2016. Um, that was around when I started uh, sort of kind of playing around with the language. Um, I wasn't using it kind of in anything real uh, for a while. Um, so my, my background is that as a uh, editor developer. Um, so I was at a, at a agency uh, building apps at, mo at that time, uh, mostly in Java. Um, but once, uh, oh, uh, by, uh, sorry, a little, a little after that, um, the, uh, uh, the, the, sorry, a, a year after um, the initial Kotlin release, um, there was the first tech preview of Kotlin Native. Um, and uh, over time, uh, we started seeing kind of some more interest in the uh, in the uh, community around Kotlin multiplatform. Um, so I started following. Uh, I wasn't at Touch Lab yet, but I started following Kevin Galligan and uh, the work that Touch Lab was starting to do, and the conversation around there was going to need new libraries in this brand new ecosystem um, as it was starting to form. Um, so this was kind of like early 2018. Um, and in February of, uh, of 2018 um, was the first uh, version of Kotlin Native that would work with Kotlin Multiplatform and give you the ability to, uh, to do that shared code with the whole Gradle tool chain. Um, and the day after that release um, was when I started writing my first Kotlin Multiplatform code, um, which at that point was, uh, we had a, a kind of sample app starter project that we would use at the company that I worked at at the time. Um, so I, I took that Kotlin project and moved it to uh, to Kotlin multi-platform. Um, and sorry, I should say one of the one of the things that that demo project did um, was it used some shared preferences uh, to up system values. Um, and as I was doing that conversion, I started thinking about well, what uh, wouldn't it be nice if there was a common API to do that? Um, the next version of Kotlin Native uh, had. Uh, was the first time that you could act, you could actually um, publish your Kotlin native dependencies as uh, as a native dependency, um, which was the thing that enabled the first libraries uh, to start to develop. So there wasn't uh, really very much in public yet at that moment. Um, the uh, kind of first experimental SQL Delight things had started to happen. Um, there was a little bit of work happening around uh, Kotlin next serialization, um, but like. Coroutines was not multi-platform yet at that time. Um, KTOR didn't even have its uh, client side yet. Um, but I uh, did my first commit. Um, so uh, almost exactly five years ago, um, it was April 17th of 2018, um, it was when I started, uh, did kind of like the first uh, draft of what became multi-platform settings. Um, it was a, kind of a month or so later before I put an actual release out. Um, but what did it look like? Um, so the, the kind of first, first version of the API um, was an expect class called settings that had, uh, this is just kind of an abbreviated version of, of what was in the code. Um, so it, it had a bunch of, uh, bunch of different um, APIs for different types. There was, there was get and set in, uh, string, double, boolean, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then there was uh, actual implementations for Android and for iOS um, that would delegate to, uh, 
delegate to share preferences on Android and we delegate to user defaults on iOS. Um, over time, that moved uh, from being an expect class to being an interface. Um, and that's kind of one of the big early lessons that I learned in my multi-platform developer uh, experience is uh, expecting actual is, is a really nice uh, addition to the tool set. Um, but when you first start using it, you start to think, you start to want to use it everywhere. Um, and there's a lot of times where having an interface uh, can be more convenient. So I, I had uh, a couple issues uh, coming from the community at one library been around for a little bit around what if I want to try to use it on other platforms or supply my own implementation um, with, an, uh, with an expect class, it's not very easy to do. Um, but with an interface, uh, you have the flexibility to provide anything. Um, so as a bit more time passed, um, added more implementations. Um, so adding a JavaScript implementation that's based around storage, um, JVM implementations based on the properties and the preferences APIs, um, Windows based on the reg registry, um, a second uh, iOS implementation using the keychain for a secure storage, um, and then a, a map-based uh, mock settings for, uh, for your unit tests. Um, and started adding some more, uh, some more other bits of functionality as well. Um, so the first feature request I ever got uh, was uh, around observability. Um, so can we add a listener so that uh, you can uh, subscribe to changes uh, to your storage and, uh, and get a callback? Um, that ended up being uh, kind of living in a separate interface um, so that because not, not all of the backend limitations have the ability to do that observability. So for example, in JavaScript, um, there actually is an API that you can use to listen to updates, but you can't do it from the same process, from the same window. Um, and so that's not, uh, not supported right now in the library. Um, another kind of bit of feedback I got from the community over time was around initialization, um, where uh, if you look at kind of these implementations we had before, um, they take the platform implementation as the platform kind of thing that it delegates to usually as, a, uh, as an argument. Um, and just that requires you to kind of set up your different platform specific um, dependency introduction. Um, but when you're just getting started, it's nicer if you can just call one function. Um, so that is available if that's a thing that you hear about. Um, so fast forward uh, through a little bit of time, um, we start to see the ecosystem uh, evolve. multi gets bigger. I joined Touch Lab. Um, and I start to see some of the platforms underneath me changing. Um, so for example, um, Google announced the data store API. Um, so what do I do with my library that's talking to shared preferences? Um, and that ended up being a particularly complicated thing to deal with because data store is all suspend and flow based. Um, whereas my settings interface was all, uh, was all just normal functions. Um, so what I ended up doing is adding a um, coroutine integration with some separate interfaces that can, uh, that are, are coroutine forward, that are, are suspending or flow based. Um, and then it's easy to, then, then those can become the, uh, the interface that uh, a data store implementation would support. Um, and then converts between them so that you can have a common code that uses uh, uses either the suspend or the non-suspend versions of things and converts uh, converts one to the other depending on what track one you want to use. Um, another integration I added around that time um, was with the uh, serialization library, so that um, you could use a uh, if you had a more complex type that you wanted to store, um, you could apply the serialization plugin to it um, and then store, essentially use the settings store as a uh, serialization format um, and save your things into, uh, save, save your complex object into your settings store. Um, so that brings us to kind of roughly the present. Um, so in January, um, I released the 1.0 of the library. Um, so not everything is stable on 1.0. A couple of the implementations I still consider experimental and the uh, coroutines and serialization integrations um, aren't completely stable yet. Um, 
but uh, as part of that, I uh, made some breakages to some of the APIs, um, which I won't go through in too much detail because I'm a little bit short on time. Um, but uh, one of the big ones was um, moving the uh, listener APIs to be um, typed. So originally, uh, a durable settings, uh, you would just receive a callback uh, when your uh, when your when your value updated, um, but you wouldn't know what the value in that was. Um, and so I adjusted that uh, adjusted that API so that you have a. Uh, oops, sorry, I'm nothing. Yeah, um, adjusted that. So 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 I, I had extension functions. Sorry, that would do it in a typed way, um, and I moved those to be in the actual interface as well, in the base interface instead. Um, another fun thing that happened recently is uh, the library reached 1,000 stars. Um, so I'm very grateful to the, well, just the, support that, uh, the support that I've gotten from the community. So with all of that, um, what is next? Um, so there's uh, plenty of open issues still, kind of things that uh, are in progress that I don't work on that uh, I'd be interested also in working with the community if you want to help. Um, so some of that is stabilizing the APIs that aren't stable yet. Um, another thing I want to do is um, update the samples. So uh, there's Android and iOS samples right now that are written using the old UI toolkits because uh, they were written in 2018 originally. Um, so updating those would be nice. Um, there's also a uh, JVM sample using Tornado FX that I'd like to move to Mose. Um, one thing that's kind of been a longstanding issue for me is um, what to do on Linux. Um, so there's a uh, um, I have, I've had kind of drafts for a little while of possible Linux implementations, um, but I don't know the platform very well to know what's useful. Um, so I'd love feedback on that. If uh, sorry, if you're someone who uh, is in the if you're someone in the Linux community, um, I'd love your feedback on what a useful backend API would be. Um, I also. Uh, I want to do some improvements on the Windows side. Um, there's no tackle bosses really there, just need to build up with this, uh, the listener support. Um, and then building out some things on the uh, serialization side. Um, when, you, uh, when you want to like remove a value, um, but you have uh, a bunch of different keys that you've added, um, how do you move them out all at once? Um, and then, of course, we've also seen that uh, Google is putting out multi-family versions of its, some of its libraries, including data store. Um, so uh, one could ask the question of, well, does that sort of replace multi-family settings? Um, I think it's sort of different use cases slightly, where um, multi-family settings is very focused on interop with other APIs whereas data store is a new implementation. Um, but in any case, um, I have integration with the data store. Um, and there's a draft right now, PR, of, uh, of um, moving that integration to the multi platform version. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, um, let me know. Um, uh, let me know. And, and oh, pop, 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 uh, <coughs> um, publish that. Sorry, my throat's a little bit. Um, but uh, in any event, I'm uh, always very interested in feedback. Um, so uh, are there other things that are missing, other things you'd like to see, um, other other implementations? Please let me know. Um, and uh, I think I'm out of time, so I will drop it there. Um, but happy to answer questions um, if uh, anybody has them. Um, come find me.